Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took this image. Now, believe it or not, that started off as a fairly simple uh, picture like you can see here, where we have uh, three candles just on a piece of slate as a, a, a base um, and nothing really to, to speak of. So this video is quite a lot to do with how you build the set. So as usual, I have um, the subject here on uh, this packing case. I have my camera, uh, which I've already set up uh, on a tripod. This is a Canon uh, 1DX Mark III with an 85mm 1.2 uh, lens on it, uh, which is tethered uh, into this computer, which is running Capture One software so that you can see the results as I take them. OK, so to start with um, this set, uh, we need to actually just build it up to make it look a little more interesting. Um, so to start with, uh, I decided that it would be a good idea to use an old offcut of, uh, of some tree cutting, uh, which was going on in a nearby field, uh, as a background. So I'll just put that in place. Here we are. So that's going to form the background to our image. Uh, the next thing to, uh, to address is that uh, if you just take pictures of things which are just in a straight line like this, it is always pretty boring. It's a good idea to try and get some, uh, some differences in height in there. And um, from time to time, it's also a good idea, uh, if you can, uh, to get some differences in uh, perspective. So closer and further away from the camera. So I'll just move these out of the way for a second. Uh, and I'll bring in some more pieces of slate. Uh, these are just old um, bits of roof slate. So what I can do here is if I just put a piece of wood there, like so, and just arrange this, something like that, this one may be here, another one there, uh, and then I'll just get another uh, level, which I can make up by, again, a couple of pieces of wood just to hold the thing up. Another piece of slate. So this could go something like that, like so, and this one can go on here. Now this is maybe a little wibbly wobbly. Uh, so just to counterbalance that a bit, I'll just put uh, a clamp on this side, just to counterbalance the weight a bit. It's a good idea to get this roughly right, uh, and then just have a look through the viewfinder and just see what it looks like. So we'll just have a little look. That's not too bad. Yeah, what I might do actually is just move this one uh, a little bit further, further back and just move all of this back so it's a bit closer to the tree, like so. Because then that is giving it uh, a bit more of a change in perspective. These are a, a little more spread out uh, in this direction towards the camera. There we go. Let's just check that again. Yep, that's better. OK. So, so far, so good. Um, let me show you, uh, just with the ambient light that we have uh, at the moment, the sort of thing that we're getting. OK, so you can see from that that it's uh, a little um, dark. Uh, we just need to uh, increase. I'm going to actually increase the ISO. Um, I'll take that up to 400. Just have another go. There we are. So just using the ambient lights in the room, uh, you can see that the depth of field is actually quite narrow. Uh, we're on f4 at the moment. Um, so again, that could be changed. There's a couple of ways to do this. You can either go for a bigger, a smaller aperture, bigger f number, um, which will give you a bigger depth of field, or do a bit of focus stacking. 
So let's just have a look at that. Obviously, I've changed the uh, F number, so I will just wind up the ISO. Well, that's getting there. Obviously, I don't need to be stuck at uh, a hundredth of a second. I can slow this down. So we'll go for a fiftieth. There we are. Uh, so a little adjustment to the focus, I think, might be in order. It's always a lot easier to check your focus um, on a large monitor like this uh, than it is by trying to look through the viewfinder uh, or on the back of the camera. Uh, but if you're stuck with the back of the camera, then by all means give that a go. Yeah, it's not quite there yet. I think if we're going to go down this road, we're going to need a much bigger aperture. Let's go for 16. Oops, that went the wrong way around. Let's go for 16 and obviously um, take the shutter speed down to compensate. There. I think that's starting to get into focus. That one's in focus. That one's in focus. And that one's in focus. OK. So what we've learnt so far then is that by using uh, a smaller aperture, bigger F number, um, this is on f16 now. Uh, I've ended up with a big enough depth of field to get everything in focus um, at this distance. Uh, to compensate, because I'm just using the ambient light that's in the room at the moment, um, I've used a longer shutter speed. Uh, and I've also wound up the ISO. Um, now, on most modern uh, cameras, you can quite happily shoot at 800 ISO, and it's not going to make that much difference. Um, it will, uh, if you are blowing this up to um, a ridiculous amount to hang on the wall, then uh, you might want to not use 800, but maybe limit yourself to 400. Uh, but under no normal circumstances, when you're just using these for the likes of Instagram and things on the interweb, then um, 800 ISO is perfectly fine. OK. So far, so good. So we need a bit more set dressing, I think. Uh, this is uh, a bit too clean as it is at the moment. So I'm just going to add a few bits of bark to make the whole thing a little more interesting. Like so. And I also have a few dried up leaves uh, which we can just sprinkle around just to dress the set a bit. There we go. Pop a few bits on here. This will help to give you an impression that you're not actually uh, just in a studio. To give you an idea, I'll just uh, take a quick image of that. And there. So that's starting to come along a little. Um, and now, just to finish that off, I'll add a few little bits of fern, just to give a bit of interest. And this also helps to create a sense of depth to your picture, because parts of this will hopefully be out of focus if I get it in the right place. So if I just put that, uh, actually I'll put that the other way around, put that down there somewhere. I'll just check that through the viewfinder. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll show you what that looks like. There we go. Uh, and finally, I'll just put a piece in here just to cause a very small amount of occlusion. 
So again, just a bit of fern. I'm putting it quite a long way forwards uh, so that it does fall out of focus. Uh, I'll just check that through the viewfinder just to see what that looks like. Yeah, well, that's not bad. Um, this particular piece is just in the way of one of the candles. So we'll just do a piece of gentle pruning there. There we go. And again, I'll just show you what that looks like. OK. So far, so good. So this is the set that we're building uh, so far. Uh, so we haven't lit this yet. We're just using the ambient lights in the, in the studio, uh, which isn't brilliant. Um, you should be able to see that there are various highlights on the, uh, on the bits of glass here. Um, so what I'm going to do next uh, is just use this light um, to illuminate uh, this subject. Uh, and I'm going to do that somewhere from around here, around the black. Uh, this is a continuous uh, light. This is uh, an LED uh, light made by Ari. Uh, and uh, this is a, an L7C. Uh, uh, so it's uh, continuously variable uh, color temperature, for instance. Uh, and we can also um, have the equivalent of putting gels in this to make it any color uh, we like. So I'll just turn this on. I'll wind that up there somewhere like that. And now with that on, I'm going to uh, take out the house lights uh, so that we can set up the lighting properly. OK, so with the house lights out, you should be able to see um, that uh, we've got uh, quite a lot of fairly high contrast light uh, coming in from the back. Um, I've no idea what, the, uh, what that has done to the exposure, so let's just start by taking a, a quick test. OK, so at first sight, uh, that's actually remarkably close to where we want to be except I don't quite like the way the light is coming down on the back here. Uh, so I'll just move that round slightly. So it's uh, grazing um, the back of this uh, piece of wood a bit more. So if I just bring this round here. In fact, the other thing that I can do is just spin this whole piece, oops, round a little. that. I'll just rearrange that bit. Like so. Right. We'll just have another test. Yes, that's better. OK. So we can see in this image, we're now grazing the back of this a bit. Uh, which is uh, really what I wanted. Uh, in fact, I think I might just come slightly further round with the light. Just to catch a bit more. Like that. Do another test. Yep, that's pretty good. The other thing that I've just noticed on here is it might do to be a bit more uh, of a point light source. Um, one of the advantages of using these type of lights is that they are focusable. Um, so by turning this, I can change uh, the focus on the light. I think you should be able to see that. Uh, if I take it to its extreme, we now have uh, a fairly concentrated spot. Um, so that will almost certainly be overexposed. I'm going to turn this down a little, just to bring that back in. Let's have another test. There we are. And I'm just going to bring this back, just to get the uh, 
uh, this portion lit properly. I like the texture that it's bringing out on there. Like so. Uh, possibly a little bright. Just take that down a bit. Yes, that's better. OK. Uh, now, one of the other things that I was um, thinking about when I was doing this is, um, obviously, we're going to light the candles, which are, is going to give uh, a very nice um, yellowy glow. At the moment, uh, everything is set to a daylight tele uh, color temperature, uh, so 5,700 uh, Kelvin. But with these lights, I can change that at will. Uh, in fact, I can make it any color I like. Uh, so what I might do is just change this one so that it emulates uh, a bit of moonlight. Uh, so I can do that just by altering the controls on the side here. So I'll just change that. And now we can wind through and get all sorts of different hues. So what I'm looking for is a sort of steely blue. There, somewhere around there. That looks quite nice. Let's just take a test of that. Yep, that's the sort of thing. Now obviously, um, with that being now blue, you can't actually make out a great deal of the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the candles anymore. So I'm now just going to bring in uh, another light, uh, just to light this area uh, at the front here. So I'll just bring this in, like so. And we'll just turn that up a little and take another test. There we are. OK. Uh, this I'm going to turn the colour temperature down from 5,700 uh, to something a bit more glowy, um, 3,200, which is very nearly tungsten. There we are. Uh, and just take the intensity down ever so slightly on that one as well. So we've still got the, uh, the blue in the background, which is what I wanted. Uh, OK. Now I think it's time to light the candles. OK. So now with those all lit, we can do uh, another little test just to see how that is coming through. Excellent. Now I'll just check the image um, and we'll just have a look round and just see whether that's what we want. Certainly sharp enough. We're getting some nice reflections. Ah, this has actually got a piece of wax there, you can see. Uh, so what I might do is just rotate that whole candle around a little. That's why it's always a good idea to have a good look around your image. Um, so, let me just turn this round. I'll just put it so it's at the side. There we go. Uh, the other ones look okay. All our leaves are in place. We'll just take uh, another test. Yep, that is pretty good, I think. Right. So now, as a final enhancement, uh, what I'm going to do is purposely uh, take it out of focus uh, and take another image. And then I'm going to blend those two together uh, in Photoshop um, to produce the final result. So let's just do that. Uh, so I'll just have a quick look through the camera and just see how far out of focus I want to, to go. Uh, so, if I just wind that to around there to start with. 
Um, yeah, well, that is out of, but it's not very far out of focus. Let's try that. There we are. That's quite a long way out of focus. Um, but one of, the, uh, one of the problems with doing this with this particular lens is um, a thing called lens breathing. Uh, you may have noticed um, on the image here uh, that the actual size of each one of these has changed quite markedly as I change the focus. Uh, so in order to um, mitigate that, what I'm going to do is um, take it back to the original focus point uh, and then I'm going to change the aperture to give me a very narrow depth of field, in which case I won't need to move the, uh, the focus ring as much to give me an out of focus image. So the first thing I'll do is just set this back to where it was. Just take an image. We'll just check that one. Uh, nearly. I'm just looking for the focus on all of them, which is looking good. That's good. So I'll just put a marker on that one, like so. Uh, so now, uh, instead of F16, I'll take it to um, I'll take it to 1.2, which is a huge difference. Uh, so we're going to need quite a increase in shutter speed to compensate for that. So I'll start at that and see what happens. Whoa, still far too bright. So let's just keep going. Now we're getting there, but you will notice that we have very, very little depth of field in this image and it's still ever so slightly bright. So I'm just going to take that down a bit more, like so. Right, so this one at the back here uh, is actually in focus. That's what we had before. That's what we've got now. But everything else seems to have changed. Uh, and that's the effect uh, that I was looking for. OK, so that exposure uh, is not too bad. Uh, so what I can do now is use that uh, in conjunction with the original uh, good one that we marked earlier uh, in Photoshop uh, to create the final image. Uh, so that's what I'll do now. So here we are in Photoshop. Uh, so I've got the two images uh, that we, uh, we took earlier. Uh, so this is the, uh, the sharp one, uh, and then this one is the one which we purposely made a bit softer, a bit more out of focus. Uh, so what I'm going to do to start with uh, is just grab this one, select all, edit copy, then select this one, and edit paste. That will just make me uh, a small stack down here of two images. So if I just turn this one on and off, you can see the difference it makes. OK, uh, so what I'd like to do uh, is just look at the, the way that this uh, influences the other one. Um, so if I, for instance, just take the opacity down, on here. Uh, on this front candle you can see uh, the sort of effect that we're getting. Uh, and it's giving a sort of dreamlike state uh, to bits of the, uh, the other one, uh, bits of the background. Like so. But I think the, the thing here is that um, you don't want the effect that we've got here um, over everything. Uh, for instance, this candle is looking a little worse for the wear, um, 
being out in front, it's the one which is mostly out of focus. But the effect that it's having on the background, I think is actually quite nice. Maybe a bit too much at 53%, so I can just knock that back a little, like so. Yeah, that's working quite well. Um, so what I will do is just add a layer mask to this. So if I just come down here and add that mask, and now wherever I paint with black, the effect will be masked out. Let me just change the size of this brush a little. There we go, make it a bit bigger, like so. So I can bring the sharpness back where I want it. leaving the rest to be a little soft. So I'll just bring the sharpness back on all of the glass, I think. I think that works quite well. But I'll leave it soft on everything else. So if I now turn that on and off, you can see the effect it's having. OK, that's pretty good. Um, what I would do now is just make a, uh, a bit of a stamp layer of those two uh, so I can do some further editing. So in order to do that, I'll hold down the Shift key, the Control key, the Alt key, and press the E key. And that has now produced this, which is an amalgamation of the ones that are underneath it. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do with this is just change the, uh, the colour balance ever so slightly. Um, so I will just do that up here under Adjustments. Colour balance. Uh, and I'm just going to make it a bit warmer, all told. Maybe not quite so much red, but a little bit of... There we go yellow in there, mostly in the mid-tones. There we go. Just to match the candle view, like so. Uh, and I think I might also just make a global adjustment to the levels. I just want to make it a little more punchy. You can either use levels for this or um, you can do it with curves, but whichever you prefer, really. I think that's better, like so. Uh, as for a crop, I'm quite happy with the way it is, actually. If anything, you could possibly lose a little bit at the top, uh, just to concentrate it a little. Uh, I wonder how far away from the... 16 by 9, that is. Not too far at all. So let's go with that. There we go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that uh, little demonstration. And we've ended up with something uh, which I think is uh, quite a considerably better than just three candles in a row. Well, if you like seeing these sort of things, uh, do click on the other images as they appear, uh, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.